It was the ancient Romans who named this place the Dead Sea, a majestic body of deep blue water framed by remote desert cliffs, so salty that no fish or plants live in its mineral-rich waters. Some 1,300 feet below sea level, it is the lowest surface on Earth. Basically, you, you see the layers. You see literally the layers. Yeah. yeah. Thousands of years. Yeah. Jackie Benzakin is with the Dead Sea Search and Rescue Team. He knows every inch of this place and showed us some of its many treasures. Another uh, thing that you're going to see that is uh, unique to the Dead Sea is uh, salt diamonds. Right. Salt diamonds are uh, basically diamonds from salt that are created in the deep mud. They need mud, they need a lot of soil pressure, just like diamonds. If you don't like diamonds, there are also salt pearls rounded by the gentle waves of the sea. You, you can actually find like perfectly pearls Yeah. From salt. Even the mud is precious. It is said to provide relief from skin ailments and arthritis. Its rejuvenating qualities have spawned a wide range of beauty products. Slathering yourself in Dead Sea mud is considered by many to be the ultimate spa treatment. But the water itself is perhaps the biggest attraction. The Dead Sea is about eight times saltier than the ocean, so the water is incredibly dense, and that makes it the easiest place in the world to stay afloat. Bobbing on the water, breathing in the low-altitude, oxygen-rich air, one quickly relaxes. And this is also part of the healing of the Dead Sea, I think. It calms you down. It's really a good place to take care of yourself. So it's a place for reflection as well? Yes, yes, yes. We say that if you bring all the leaders of the world and put them in the Dead Sea for a week, it might look different. But the Dead Sea is dying, disappearing at a rate of one yard every year. Across the landscape, a series of ruins from not-so-ancient history illustrates just how dramatic that retreat has been. Gidon Bromberg is the director of Friends of the Earth Middle East. Well, this was the place to be on the shores of the Dead Sea, uh, particularly in the mid-1950s, where people would be drinking coffee, literally facing the Dead Sea in front of them. You'd walk down the stairs, and at the bottom of the stairs, the Dead Sea was right there. Wait, so the water came right up to these stairs? right up to the stairs. <laughs> Traditionally, the Dead Sea has been sustained by the waters of the River Jordan, where the Bible says the Israelites crossed into the Promised Land and where Jesus Christ was baptized. But in recent years, those waters have been diverted to Syria, Jordan and Israel for irrigation. And next to uh, nothing today flows down that river. And in the very south, Industry in Israel and in Jordan have turned the Dead Sea into an industrial quagmire, extracting the unique minerals of the Dead Sea, but in the process, drying up that Dead Sea. Massive sinkholes now pockmark the landscape, turning large parts of the coast into danger zones. The disappearing water is also a threat to the rich ecosystem that has thrived on the edge of the Dead Sea for millennia. Rare species like the Jordan River's St. Peter's fish live in freshwater pools. As the Dead Sea disappears, that sweet water is getting sucked away with it. Ashira Greenberg works at the Ein Sukim Nature Reserve. So what we're doing is we're moving all the different fish here and all the different uh, species here in the water to new, bigger, wider pools at the southern part of the reserve, hoping we won't have to move them again. That will only be possible if countries in the region can put aside their differences and agree on a plan to rehabilitate the Jordan River and limit the mineral industry. We don't think that we'll ever bring the waters of the Dead Sea to splash back here on these steps. But what we are trying to do, what we really believe is possible, is to stabilize the Dead Sea, is to stop it continuing to drop every year. To keep the Dead Sea alive, so that generations for thousands of years to come can continue to bob in its healing waters and lose themselves in the grandeur of its scenery.